guys welcome back to dragon exotics and today oh have i got a video for you it's been getting really cold up here i mean 15 degrees at night we're hitting that cold snap and uh makes me want to get in a onesie and stay all nice and warm sit by a heater maybe not a fireplace but sit by a heater and feel cozy so today we're going to be talking about how to keep your birds warm and cozy because we all know that they should be just as comfortable as you are during this winter season. So let's get some tips and tricks done. Okay, tip number one, the K&H heaters. These heaters, which I'm going to show in a video in a moment, are probably my favorite as far as bird heating devices go, mainly because I've been using them for the past few years. This one is trying to break the camera. And they're wonderful. They're easy to set up in the cage and they keep your birds warm at night. However, you gotta know how they work. Some people may buy them online and be like, wow, this is an expensive perch heater, but let's, let's do it, let's throw it in your cage. You can do that. But if you own these guys, here's some things to be aware of. One, they come with a little metal plate that uh, she just totally destroyed. So if you have it attached to your cage, your birds can get to that cord. And even though it says it's bite proof from birds, it's not. And so they, they can bite through the cord and they can destroy it. And uh, I'll show you how I have that set up in this video right here with a few extra tips. As promised, here's a video of one of the k &H Purge heaters. Now, as you may notice, the normal texture is kind of smooth, and most birds kind of take a minute to get used to it, but to make it easier on them, you might want to wrap it in vet wrap so that they can grip it better, feel more comfortable on it, and uh, it helps, I feel like, keep it warm better. So you want to make sure when you're using these heaters that you Plug it in and wait about 10 minutes. Make sure that it is not getting too hot for your bird's little feet. Uh, you will find evidence that it may be too hot the following morning if your bird's feet are a little bit extra red. Uh, then you may want to consider adding more vet wrap to the perch or just seeing if it's malfunctioned because that can happen. Usually these guys will be warm to the touch so that they're it's not too hot for your hand, but it's a nice warm addition for your feet pretty great. Uh, notice in the back how I have some lovely PVC back there. That is because they will chew the cord and PVC is a wonderful thing to help prevent birds from chewing the cord. So I have that running all the way down and the same goes for the perch on the other side for ember. So they both are the same. Birds can chew the metal off of it. For example, there we go. For example, if you check out this perch right here, you can see that the metal is peeled off thanks to Fumble. She she had a great time doing that. So that is one big thing to remember with these. Make sure you protect the cord because they will chew it off. They will try to chew the metal and uh, use vet wrap. It really comes in handy and it's good for them. If they tear it off too much or if they make it dirty, remember to change it when you do your big deep cleanings for the cage. So it's, it's a big thing to keep in mind. Uh, but that's for that. Let's go back to the video. Tip number two, we have the K&H uh, kind of cuddle heaters. And this, I'm not gonna throw a picture online because I actually have one right here. And this looks great, doesn't it? Look at that. She can warm up to it, you know. She'd have to be right up against it for the heat to actually kind of, for her to feel it, if that makes sense. It doesn't have much radiant heat. So I would think that these are best if you have smaller birds or if your bird can, you know, they like to cuddle up against things. If they don't, it might not be the best solution. Or if you just wanna add some extra heat options to your cage, you can add that. However, same thing with the first k &H product. You wanna make sure you know what you're getting into before you add it to the cage because like the others, they can bite the wires and, um, Let's just say they have this little protector on it, but it didn't do much, now did it? Because look what happened. It's gone. Can it focus? 
Mm, not gonna focus too well, is it? Well, anyways, yeah. She totally tore this up. Don't worry, no birds are harmed. The nice thing is if they do bite the wire, it is a hazard. So you do want to prevent it. But if they do, it didn't kill them and it didn't shock them. And I think they are okay. <laughs> there were no issues. Uh, besides the issue of me losing a lot of money. But you get used to it when you own birds. <sighs> oh man. But it is a good product. Tip number three. This tip, I do wanna go in a bit more detail on. This would be the tip about heaters. And whether it's one of those heaters from like a, a dual AC unit where it has both heating and cooling, or if it's an oil-filled heater, or if it's a ceramic heater, there are some things you wanna keep in mind. Uh, personally, I have all three of those and so I have the dual AC unit and the biggest thing I want to stress about this as well as any other sort of items that would prevent a wind current or just blowing uh, that could make your bird cold you want to make sure your birds aren't exposed to the draft you want to make sure they're not exposed to any of that air even coming towards it I have the dual heater but at night it gets so cold that even the heating section are you doing even the heating section will blow air that i'd say can be cold if the heater's right here their cage is over here by the time that air gets to their cage it's going to be cold for them so it may be heating up the room but you have to be aware that it might be cold for them so it could be blowing that cold air to them so that's just a tip with that one what are you trying to preen my eyelashes huh what are you doing so the next type of heater that I'd like to discuss are the ceramic heaters. If you're going to be using a ceramic heater, okay, listen to me very closely. You want to use one that does not have Teflon. I'm sure you've heard in some of my other videos how dangerous Teflon can be for birds and it can be deadly for birds. Usually it is uh, a compound that's found in nonstick cookware. And so when it's heated to a certain temperature, it releases that into the air and the birds breathe it in and they get sick and die. Don't have Teflon. If you're worried that this heater, the ceramic heater has Teflon, call the company, figure out for sure, because you don't wanna put your birds at risk. So I'll show you what I have um, in a clip right, right here. This is my oil-filled heater. Promised I'd give you an example of. As you can see, do not cover an oil heater. You don't want to start a fire. Come on, guys. You guys should know this. Um, it doesn't tell you the temperature of the area around it, but it does temp tell you the temperature it would set to. These guys are energy savers in a way, so once they get that temperature, it kind of turns off. Uh, it keeps the area warm even after it turns off. So if you don't have power, then it'll keep the area warm at least for a little bit before the power is... Uh, regain. So they're pretty handy. I put mine right next to the cage about four inches away. You know, it's a big cage and I am always monitoring the temperature, so it's okay. Uh, but these things are great. They're not extremely hot. Like I can touch it right now and boo, it's fine. Uh, I wouldn't leave it unsu around unsupervised birds because they destroy everything and knowing them, they would burn themselves. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure that your birds are safe. But this is what I used. Uh, from what I know, it does not have any Teflon. It's safe. I've been using it for a while. Um, no extra smells that come out. And it's pretty great. Moving over here. There's my air filter right there. Um, this is not on right now, but it's my ceramic heater by the brand Comfort Zone. And this one is what is very nice. It does not have any Teflon in it. I use this during the day if I have to. It has a rotating feature. It tells you what the temperature of the room is and you can set it to when you want it to turn on and when you want it to turn off. So it's pretty handy, but I thought I'd show you that one just so you have a feel for the heaters that I use. Um, but yeah, let's move on. Lastly, the type of heating that I use is an oil-filled heater. 
And this heater is what I use at night while they're in the cage because we all know if you leave anything around unattended birds, like they are, because they do stay in the room all day, non-caged, they will destroy it. They really will. And uh, I don't want it destroyed because one, they can hurt themselves, two, it's expensive, and three, I can prevent it, so I will. Uh, so I do use this one at night. I put it directly up against the cage at night, like a second. I'll show but you the video. It does well. You know, it doesn't quite heat up the entire room how I'd like it to. <laughs> Missy, you cannot destroy the phone. It doesn't quite heat up the room how I'd like it to, but it does a good job heating up the cage. And you want to make sure that you do maintain a temperature, at least where the birds are sleeping, you want to maintain that temperature from 65 to 80 degrees is probably the range you're looking for. I prefer them to sleep in like 73 if I can get it there. And, and to ensure that their temperature is optimal, I have like, I have a dozen of those, um, like Gobi temperature thermostat things. And so I have like one on that side of the room. I have a wall thermometer right there. I have one on the warmer side of the room. I even have one at the top of the cage. So I have the most accurate temperature. And so it sends a notification to my phone when the temperature is over or under, you know, I'll know so I can go fix it because we don't want your birds being too cold and you don't want them too hot. Um, but it's definitely something you want to consider during the winter time because you don't want them to be cold. For, for example, I may say that birds could be fine in 65 to 80, but each bird is different. If these guys are shaking in 65 degrees, you want to crank up that temperature a bit, maybe 73, like it mentioned, so, so they're warm because you don't want them to be too cold. And same thing goes that if it's too warm and they're hanging out their wings and they just are, they look, to, they look uncomfortable, you should know when the, your birds just have that dazed off look, they look crazy, that they're just, they're too hot. Remember, birds cannot regulate their body temperature and it's up to you as the owner to provide them an environment that keeps them warm or keeps them cool and ultimately keeps them comfortable. So if that means, you know, changing that temperature, increasing 65 to like 70 to 73 if they're too cold, or decreasing it if 80 is too hot for them, decrease it down to like 75, then you gotta do that because you want them to be comfortable. So my general rule is I think 70, 70 to 75 is the perfect temperature for these guys. And so I do my best to ensure that they have the best temperature through some of the me methods that I had mentioned earlier. So just, just to recap guys, we talked about the K&H heated purchase, talked about the little K&H cuddles, the warm cuddle thing. I guess I can send a link right here. Uh, we talked about the different types of heaters. Remember, make sure that, that it does not have Teflon. And we talked about the temperature. You wanna make sure you keep your birds warm. If you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comments because I'm not, I don't wanna be that scary and I'd be happy to answer your comments and answer your questions if you have any. So please do. Now I wanted to get into what not to do during winter time, things that are maybe promoted in stores, promoted online. And you may be like, oh, that sounds really cool. Let's get that. That sounds amazing. But maybe not be the best, uh, best thing to do for your pets as far as temperatures go or how to keep them warm. So the first thing I want to talk about are those little cuddle huts. They're, you'll see them in stores, you'll see them online. Sometimes they're like boxes, like a little fuzzy box, like this picture right here. And they, they seem great, but they can have a few disadvantages and a few hazards. For example, if you have a bird that you don't want getting into breeding behavior, it might not be the best option for you because the bird may crawl inside and it kind of mimics a nest and that can trigger uh, hormones and breeding behavior, which no one wants an uh, egg bound bird. So keep that in mind. Another hazard with those little cuddle huts and all those fabric based ones is that if the bird and if they're like these guys 
destroys it, they can actually eat all those little threads and all the little particles. And if they eat it, they can't actually get it out of their system. And so they can kind of get a blockage from that. Kind of how, like how you see in dogs, that if you see dogs that eat the rope toys and it all balls up in their belly and then they have to go into surgery to get it removed, it's kind of similar to that. Except birds, you don't really have much time to figure that out. So if they eat it and something is wrong, they they could die any day or even any hour, depending on what time, what time when you find out. And so you really wanna be on top of it and prevent it if you can. Uh, prevention is a big thing with birds. You wanna prevent them getting in as much trouble as you can because you wanna keep these guys safe. So those cuddle houses, not the best. Main reason, fabric. You don't want them to ingest it and get sick. So keep that in mind. Another thing like I mentioned for two, another thing that I mentioned is that you want to avoid Teflon. Teflon is so dangerous. I mean, I kind of just want to leave it right there. I feel like I've talked about it so many times. It, it can kill your bird. So as I mentioned, just make sure that your products don't have it, anything that you have. Some oil filled heaters may have Teflon. So if you're getting a really old one, like, I don't know how that would work. Like you get a new, one of the old versions, it could have Teflon. So just always call, always call the companies. Just make sure they don't have it so your birds are safe. And it's, you guys, play nice please. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, you also want to, <laughs> Wow. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas for, for having such crazy birds. I love it. So that's it for two. Make sure they don't have Teflon or any uh, toxic substances in the heater. I had forgot to mention, but I guess it does fall under this category of what not to do. When you get a heater, a new heater, you're like, this is amazing. Or you're like, last minute, oh no, I gotta run to the store. My birds are gonna freeze. I gotta get a heater. You get that heater, okay, right? Okay, guys, please, please. You get that heater and you bring it in your room and you plug it in and you're like, what is that smell? It's it's the smell of new heaters. And I knew it happened with ceramic heaters and typically you have to run them for maybe a few hours every day for up to a week. You can probably pull four, four days depending on how long you run it. And the same goes for oil-filled heaters, which I couldn't find anything on. I did not know that oil-filled heaters would release a slight smell once you, once you plug them in. Guys, behave. So, <laughs> yeah, the oil-filled heaters do release a smell. Keep that in mind. However, I feel like you don't have to let them run as long. I let mine run for three days for a few hours every day. Smell was completely gone. I don't have any issues with the smell. And as you can see, my birds have been okay with them having these heaters for a while now. So they, they've been good with me, but always double check on which heater you're getting, the brand of heater and so forth. Thank you, Ember, thank you. If you're in an emergency situation and you really wanna get your birds warm, uh, remember, if your birds are cold, what not to do is your birds are freezing. Oh no, let's immediately bring them up into like a super hot environment. That that can shock their system. So I'd say best to avoid that. It's best to kind of transition them slowly, bring them into maybe room temperature and then extra warm if you'd like. But don't don't go too warm. warm. Don't go over 85. Calm down guys, okay? Calm down. You don't need to go crazy. They're okay. They're strong. See? very strong birds. They can handle it. Just take the steps, calm down. You know, you want them to acclimate to that temperature. You can't just throw a bird that's been living in a room at like 73 degrees outside in 20 degree weather and expect everything to go okay. Everything with birds has to be slowly acclimated. So keep that in mind. If uh, if you also don't have any electricity, you don't have a way to keep your birds warm, what you could do is focus on the natural things you can do in your home. For example, there's these plastic things you can put over your windows that kind of help insulate your home. So there's a picture of that right here. 
You also can add more insulation to your home. I don't know, throw some blankets somewhere, you know, along the walls. You can even put rugs on the floor to help insulate the floor because sometimes that can help your room by 10% uh, just by to increase the temperature. So that can be very helpful. Uh, other things you can do in your room is cover your cage. Now, I've seen some people say that it doesn't help by covering your cage at all. You'd have to cover the entire cage, which I don't recommend because birds need air to breathe. So um, look at the fabric you're using and make sure that they can still breathe through that if you're gonna do that. Uh -huh. But I have noticed that you really, you don't have to cover the entire cage to keep them warm. And in my experience, I have the oil filled heater by the cage. I will show you the blanket setup I have on top. But basically I cover the back and I cover half of these, uh, the sides and then I cover half of the front. And so that's been working well for me. It seems to keep it nice and warm where their perches are and I haven't had any issues. Okay, buddy. Wonderful. Yes, so. Okay, so lastly, if you guys haven't been paying attention this entire video, I mean, that's okay. Here's a summary. We talked about the K&H heaters in the beginning. We talked about the other types of heaters by K&H. Talked a bit about the ceramic heaters, oil filled heaters, the AC heaters, and how effective they really are. Uh, remember, avoid uh -huh. Teflon, no Teflon. Just, just no Teflon, guys, please. Uh, then talked about what not to do, which includes don't get those little cuddle buddies, those little cuddle fabric things that could eat them, ingest them, and die. Remember that, just be careful. Yes, it doesn't always happen, but it can happen. Play it safe, might as well. There's nothing, you, you save 20 bucks and your bird is safe, so great job. Uh, some other things is that you can help keep your birds warm by insulating your room through rugs, window covers, um, you're covering your cage to keep that warm. Okay, guys, please, please calm down. I know we're nearing the end of the video. Guys are getting spicy. Are you getting spicy? They're getting extra spicy. Might be getting cold. They got to go in their nice, warm, heated cage. Oh, but those are just some basic winter tips to really just understand and know for the future. If you want to keep your birds warm, most people have their birds in their own home and Usually most people like to live in 65 degrees and up. So just gonna put that out there. But worst comes to worst, you can use an oil filled heater if you're worried. Uh, do these do heaters, these heaters can, uh, oh man, I guess this video is really nearing its end. These heaters can dry their feathers out and let's see, come here. The heaters can dry their feathers out and so make sure that you give them extra baths during the winter and that you try to keep the humidity up if possible. You don't want the ha them to have dry, brittle feathers and then they won't be happy even though they're warm. So <laughs> keep your birds happy. Remember these tips and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave comments down below if you had any questions and see you next time. Bye!